I'm joined today by Murat Sitt and Stephen Pace, co-managers of the Bailey Gifford European Growth Trust. This is the European Investment Trust that was formerly managed by Edinburgh Partners. Stephen, Moritz, welcome. Hi, good morning. Now, Stephen, following the board's decision to move the mandate away from Edinburgh Partners to Bailey Gifford, are there going to be any notable changes in the company's objective and policy going forward? I think the most notable change will be a move to having an explicit focus on capital growth rather than capital and income. Um, and this is entirely logical um, and unsurprising given our investment style, which is growth investing. We're looking for entrepreneurial companies investing for future value creation. Now, beyond that, we're proposing a couple of changes. Um, we would like to expand the range of holdings from 30 to 50 to 30 to 60. We would like the ability to invest up to 10% of total assets at the time of purchase in unlisted equities. And we'd like to be able to use gearing up to a maximum of 20% based on the listed part of the portfolio. Now, we will obviously ask shareholders to vote in these proposals at the AGM on January 23rd next year. So what will these changes actually mean in practice? Well, in practice, this means that we're going to reposition the portfolio towards growth. We want to reposition the portfolio towards companies where we think growth has been mispriced. But beyond that, the turnover will remain very low. Um, our investment horizon is between five and ten years. The active share will probably creep up. Um, this is probably above 90%. So what we get from that is a portfolio which will be very differentiated, but will also give us the best chance of outperforming over long periods of time. Okay, so in terms of unlisted then, what is the thought process here? Are shareholders going to wake up the day after the AGM to see a portfolio of 10% in unlisted equities? No, I think that this will be a, a slow process. I think that unlisted, um, unlisted equities may contribute 5 to 10% of the total portfolio um, within three, three years or so. So a, a fairly slow um, conservative process. You're both co-managers of the Bailey Gifford European Fund. That doesn't invest in unlisted equities. So that's one notable differentiator here straight away going forward. But what other differences uh, are people likely to see between the open-ended fund that you both co-manage and this particular investment trust? Well, the open-ended fund will form the core part of the trust. But as you said, the, the trust has a, a specific um, structure which enables us to invest in unlisted equities. But it will also enable us to go further down the market cap scale. Uh, we can now invest down to 500 million market cap, uh, which probably adds another 300 or so potential ideas to the pot. And we will be able to utilise gearing, which the open-ended structure doesn't allow, which enables us to maximise potential returns. Morris, how would you describe the investment approach and process? Our aim is to identify Europe's great growth companies and then own them for the long term. Um, that means we look for businesses with substantial growth opportunities, with durable competitive advantages and with strong management teams, typically in the form of owner-managers. Um, our approach has three core tenets. We are very much uh, resolutely bottom-up stock pickers. We focus on growth companies and we have adopted a long-term mindset. And the result is a portfolio that's very different from the market, from the index. How will the decision-making process work in practice between the pair of you uh, in terms of getting ideas into the portfolio and position sizing? Yeah. The first thing to emphasize is that we have chosen a very collaborative, team-based approach to investing, to decision-making. Um, there are nine investors who are covering European equities across the market cap spectrum. And everyone's day job, be it the day job of the portfolio manager or the analyst, is to do bottom-up research. Mm. Um, all research um, on existing holdings, but also on new ideas, is discussed by the whole team. Stephen and I then come together to decide what goes in the portfolio, what doesn't go in, and also the holding sizes, of course. Um, we have both worked together um, as decision makers for the European Fund since 2014. Okay. Stephen, as this is a best ideas growth portfolio, are you able to give us a flavour of the types of companies we're likely to see in this portfolio going forward? Sure. I mean, Europe still has a reputation for not being a great place to invest, but th there are still some areas where Europe does excel. And I think one of those areas would be industrial consolidators. So if you think about companies like Alice Copco, which manufactures air compressors, 
um, NIBA, which manufactures energy efficient heat pumps, or even IMCD, which is a Dutch specialty chemicals distributor. Now, these are not particularly glamorous companies, but when you look at the fundamentals, they have um, extremely attractive growth opportunities. They operate in very fragmented markets and are run and managed in some cases by people that we trust to allocate capital over a long-term uh, manner. I think another area would be consumer discretionary brands, which Europe has some of the best in the world. Uh, think of companies like Adidas, uh, Richemont, which owns the Cartier brand, Caring, which owns Gucci. These are companies which we think will be able to grow profitably for many decades. And I think another area, which is a relative new area, would be companies that exhibit um, network effects or have platform uh, business models. Companies like Spotify, um, Zalando, which is a, a fashion marketplace, and Adavinta, which is an online classifieds platform. Now, these are probably some of the most entrepreneurial businesses in Europe. Uh, they are a force of disruption and potentially have phenomenal business economics. Thank you. Maurice, Stephen touched on a number yeah. of exciting mm -hmm. growth investments there. But is now really the right time to be investing for growth? Mm. I think right now is always the most difficult time mm. to invest. Um, in reality, um, Stephen and I spend very little time worrying about whether growth as a style is in favour or not. We really try to focus on identifying great growth companies and then owning them for the long run. And I think that strategy um, can work extraordinarily well over the long term. And I think that's what really matters in the end for wealth creation. So in summary, this is a, a best ideas, actively managed growth portfolio of European listed and unlisted uh, equity ideas that will have a high active share and low turnover. Yeah. yeah. Moritz, Stephen, thank you. Thank, thank you. you.